Gospel and Homily for the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now, but remember I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be, Peace to this house. And if a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you, cure those in it who are sick, and say, The kingdom of God is very near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. A young man, when interviewed, said he was looking for guidance from the Lord as to where he should be a missionary. When considering it deeply one day, whilst he was out walking, a van passed up the road with Brazil nuts written in big colourful letters across it. That was it. The Lord wanted him to go to Brazil. The, me the bemused interviewer then asked, what would you have done if the van had Mars bar written across it? Judging by today's gospel, a missionary vocation calls for a little less naivety than our young friend had. Today, we find our Lord sending 72 disciples out on a mission. When we talk about the missions, what springs to mind are all those men and women who go overseas to establish the church and set up mission stations abroad. More often than not, these foreign mission stations will include a church, a school, a dispensary, sometimes a hospital, and even a mill for grinding corn. Worldwide, the Catholic Church runs over 5,000 hospitals and 10,000 orphanages not to mention thousands upon thousands of schools and indeed even a handsome number of universities. Also, the Catholic Church is the world's greatest charity. If the Catholic Church were to cease operations, especially in developing countries, the situation would be dire as far as medical, educational, spiritual, and even practical needs of his people were concerned. We can conclude from the above that mission is not just about preaching a gospel message of eternal salvation, which of course it is, but also concerns itself with people's quality of life in the here and now. Hence you have those mission stations, not just with the church, but also with hospitals, schools, dispensaries, and even a mill for grinding corn. The salvation of our souls often works in tandem with the salvation of our bodies. And if our bodies are undernourished or diseased, or people go without basic education or food, they cannot operate properly. We could call this a more holistic approach to missionary work. One little seven-year-old from a developing country was asked what he wanted to be when he grew up. He replied, alive. That's where missionary work begins. We can talk about heaven till the cows come home, or as Brendan Bean, a famous Irish author, once said, priests are always talking about heaven, but very few of them want to go there, at least immediately. So we can talk about heaven till the cows come home, but it will probably be the last thing on the mind of a person who goes to bed hungry every night, as a lot 
do, particularly children. For them, heaven is a square meal every day. Jesus, in sending out the 72, advised them to eat what is set before them and not overindulge. The problem with a lot of Western world people like us is that we overeat and scandalously throw away good food while others go hungry. Missionary work falls within the scope then of every Christian vocation. On the day of reckoning, our Lord will ask us if we fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visit the sick, and welcome the unwanted. He won't ask us how many degrees we got after our name, or how many spiritual highs we've had. But then again, converting love into action, as Jesus asks, is in itself spiritually uplifting. When the 72 came back greatly rejoicing that even the demons submitted to them using Jesus' name, he cautioned them not to get carried away. Pride comes before a fall. They should rejoice rather that their names are written in heaven. Our mission in this world will then have been an outstanding success. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.